going to do like a bit of a speed sew over here. Um, as well as answer those questions from that live, that thing that I asked about. Um, in my Facebook group, I did ask about if you guys had any questions. And I'm going to answer them today. Just to be fun and different. Ugh, bring my rolling cart over. I love my cart. Whoop! And I've already dropped something. First thing I touch. Good job, me. Hello, Knuckles. <sighs> Knuckles is right behind my chair on the floor. Aren't you, buddy? All right, let's put bag feet in first. Hi, Hazel. Um, I love this fabric so much. Makes me so happy. Uh, so today I'm doing the Bell Baby Bag by Swoon, and I am doing it with the Inklings and the Krakens pre-order bunny fabric, because it just screamed, um, baby bag, really? Um, I'm gonna sneeze a lot today. I have put makeup on to hide the fact of how tired I am, but my eyes are bloodshot from lack of sleep. I'd be lucky if I got four full hours. It's my own fault. I was reading a book. But still. So anyway, I am like so tired. Oh, actually, my eyes don't look too bad. That's pretty exciting. But anyway, I'm crazy tired. I'm working on it. I love the bunny. The bunny, where's the fabric? Where's a mushroom on its head? Like, I don't know. It's just adorable. Mushroom bunnies. Uh, so I have paired this so far with yellow and pink. Today we're going to do the pixie dust pink because it's a baby bag and that makes sense to me. Hello everybody. Now, for those that are popping in today, love it. Thank you very much. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I can't promise you'll get the notifications because YouTube doesn't like me. But you should still subscribe. Um, and you'll get more updates on all the patterns I do. Because let's be honest, I do a lot of videos. I love this dress. Uh, pretty sure I did it in a video. Knuckles, get out from under my feet, mate. I love, love, love this dress. I've already made one in navy blue. I plan on making more. Not even gonna lie. Love this dress. It's comfy. It's pretty, it's not too hot to wear in tropical freaking Queensland. I love it. All right, feet are in. Uh, so in Australia right now, it is 8.30 in the morning. I've just dropped Jessie off to school. And we're using thick pink waterproof canvas for the lining because I like to just keep you guessing. Let's be honest. I just like to do crazy stuff that you guys will never guess that what I'm doing. Um, my waterproof canvas. I have got some coming. I'm thinking of doing a pre-order of the thick stuff. I know I don't usually do pre-orders, uh, but I can't keep up. So that way you guys can order like a whole bunch at the same time. Which might be helpful to you. Might not be too, who knows. Oh, So we're making the Bell Baby bag. I have decided to go back and do markets. And so because of this, I need market stock. So I need to do like repeat projects. What am I looking for right now? This. No, not that. Clearly I have not organised my tub at all. Uh, so I'm just going to sew all of these pieces together and then we're going to put a binding on the top. If you don't want to do binding, you can skip it. You just sew them right sides together and fold it over. But I find that the binding is really pretty, so we're doing it. Um, this is my go-to baby bag. When people say they want a baby bag, I show them this first. Nine out of ten people will pick this one. 
Um, I do have a backpack cut out, which I should have done weeks ago, but you know, the whole school holidays thing kind of, even though I knew it was coming, I wasn't prepared for it. So I've got the baby bag cut out in like bubble or bill fabric sitting right over there. Um, and I will get to it eventually. Why are you doing this to me, fabric? So this is cotton canvas, by the way, which is thicker than the other stuff. Ah, so that one's now sewed with wrong sides together, and then I will bind it in a minute. It's easy to work with when it's one piece, so that's what we're doing. So long as you're within the seam allowance, this actually doesn't have to be all that neat despite what people might tell you. So don't stress too much about that. We are going to do the same for the, the end cap pockets, which are those two, with that one, and that one. It's quite hot and sunny here today. I don't know how I feel about that. I've kind of been enjoying the little bit of stormy weather we were having. You can also sew this upside down if it floats your boat that way. Alright, wrong sides together. So we're just basting everything. You do this first, it just makes life easier. should really I really want templates of this pattern um, but the pieces are too big for my personal little laser cutter so I can't make them very annoying all right so while we're doing this live I'm also going to just stop and read through some of the comments of questions you guys had one question I already answered any hints when using your heat press on vinyl I do have hints for that um, so you always, if you're ironing on interfacing to the back of your vinyl, always put it the interfacing side up. And I always put it between two sheets of baking paper. As crazy as that may sound, it works every time. Uh, the one time I thought I'd be cool and not bother to put it between the two sheets of baking paper, I just put it one on top. Uh, what I found was that the vinyl coating stuff melted to the bottom piece of my ironing press so that really sucked is this variegated thread no no it's just a baby pink nothing special going on here today um so yes i also do 180 degrees celsius which is i have no idea in fahrenheit literally none we bake cakes at 180, so whatever you normally bake a cake at, that's the temperature I use, for 8 seconds, and then I release it, and then I see if it's stuck. If it hasn't stuck, I will do a second lot of 8 seconds. Um, I don't do it too long, because you don't want to over melt it. That is what I use my heat press on and for. It is automatically set to 180 degrees. You turn it on tells you when it's 180 and I've got it set always for eight seconds so I just pull the lid down hit start and then it beeps at me when the eight seconds are up I love that I know a lot of people are concerned for me and my heat press but I love it it is from vivo um but the other thing is like I don't leave it running for hours like I'll turn it on I'll iron all my stuff and then I turn it off again. So it's never on for more than like 10, 15 minutes and ever because I can, in eight seconds, kind of get it done. There you go, 356 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but yeah, so I get baking paper, literally from like the kitchen, or the kitchen section, and I will use that to put 
on top and below. Now if you want to iron a decal onto the right side of the vinyl, what you want to do is, let me bring that bin closer, you want to, oh my god I'm so tired, my brain is fuzzy, um, you want to put a piece of fabric on top, not a piece of baking paper. I also will still just do it for the eight seconds. It's never needed a second hit when you're iron on HTV, which for those that don't know is heat transfer vinyl. It would also work the same for iron on transfers that you get from like Spotlight and stuff. So those are my tips for heat presses. Also, I'm using rose gold hardware today because, I don't know, I just really think it goes. And I'm using pink with rose gold teeth for my zipper, which I do stock on the website for those that don't know. For those that are new to me, I do ship internationally. And if my website says it doesn't ship, please message me because I do ship all over the world. Sometimes I just have to put in your specific region because... It's silly, and I can't do all countries ever. There's a list of, like, hundreds, hundreds of countries. So I will do yours as needed, is that answer. Okay. I'm going to, so Nicola asks, if you could only ever sew one bag from now until the end of time, which would you pick and why? I did actually ponder on this quite a lot. What would I pick if I only could make one shaped bag? Um... I mean, till the end of time, it's a hard question. Like, is life going to exist like this? Is the apocalypse coming and I can only sew one bag? Because if that's the case, I would have to pick some kind of a backpack if it's an apocalypse moment. Um, so that's a really hard question. But, like, if right now I could just sew one thing over and over to sell, it would be probably... Oh, Lola's quick. I love sewing Lola by spoon. It's really, really quick. But I do feel like I'd get sick of it really easily. So maybe my Vixen? If I could only sew bag, one bag forever? It's a really hard question. That's also, like, there's a lot of things that I can alter in a pattern. So if you gave me one pattern, I could change that pattern and add bits and subtract bits and change strap connectors and make them all look different. Um, so it wouldn't feel as boring. I can't production so very often. I mean, I can. I prefer instead to cut production. Uh, so what I mean by that is instead of making five lollas. I will cut a bunch of different bags that will use the same thread color so then I kind of get to sew a lola, then sew a vixen, then sew a wallet, then sew a baby bag but I've just used the same color thread so I can do you know 12 bobbins up and off I go. So that's more how I production sew. Um, it's also how I production cut. So at the moment I for this bag, I'll show you a finished product of this bag, because I have made a few. I also apologise for my sniffing, it's a side effect of being tired for me. I get a blocked nose because my body's trying to tell me to go to sleep. So this is the bag that we're making. Uh, this is the Little Miss and Little Mr. Fabric. This is from Spotlight, before you will ask me, uh, with my Fire Engine Red Vinyl. Um, so this is the bag we're going to do today but just in adorable pink bunnies. Now, um, why did I pick this up? See, I'm so tired, my brain's not functioning. Oh, right, yes, I know why. So I bought oh, just over a meter of this. So this didn't quite take it all up because I didn't use it on the straps. So instead what I've done is I've now taken that leftover fabric, I've cut one pouchels, I've cut one strumpet and one NCW as like the accent parts that will match with vinyl. So now I will, after this video, if I don't need a nap, I will sew those three. So I'll make up a bunch of bobbins and then I will production sew those three wallets. Now I won't make one whole wallet and then move to the next one and move to the next one. I will chain sew stuff 
because I've made them so often, I can do that without incident. So I won't get confused about what piece is what because I've made so many of them. And that's what I will do. Alright, let's put our fanciness onto the bag. I'm so sorry I'm sniffing. My nose is outrageous. Anyway, I hope that answered that question. Let's go back and look at the comments because apparently I can't do both here. I can't sew the same thing over and over. Uh, so I'm doing a market and I have a lot of bags. If you guys have ever looked into my website of finished items, I have a cupboard full of bags. Like it's outrageous, which is why I'm going to go dual market because my bags are amazing and I know they are and my photo taking skills are atrocious and I know that too. Oh, stop sniffing. I'm so tired, I even went and bought a giant Red Bull. Like, it's the size of my head. I don't like coffee, unfortunately. I do like Red Bull, though. I had quit it for a while there. And I'm so tired today. So, no, I don't have allergies right now. My body, when I get tired, this has always been a thing, my body continuously sneezes like I'm crazy. My nose gets either runny or blocked or both, and it's a signal trying to tell me to go to bed. Except I was in bed by 9.30 last night, and I just couldn't sleep. And so this is the consequences of not sleeping. I now seem like I'm catching a cold. Except I'm not. I'm just tired. It's going to drive me and probably you insane, so I do apologise for that. There's just nothing I can do. Is that going to reach? Yes. So I creased the centre mark so that I could just fold this in half and put it on. If you didn't want to do this in vinyl because you're on a domestic, just make double folded like bias tape and fold it over the edge. Or again, you can just, you don't have to put this bit, you can just do it the other way. As always, I put the fabric everywhere. Oh, I missed a bit. I felt that. Um, if you wanted to save on fabrics and stuff, what you could do is you could have this as a solid pink and then have all the pockets on the outside as the print. Again, that's if you want to save your printed fabrics. I don't ever do that, but it is an option. See, I missed. Yeah, I feel a sneeze coming. <sighs> You're welcome. I like to share my knowledge. I always have. I'm actually going to do an exclusive live for all my legitimates that subscribe to, like, the donating part of my YouTube channel. Uh, so now that the school holidays are over, I'm going to pick a pattern and I'm going to do it exclusively for them as a live and let them all know, obviously. And I might even let them see the hacked version of Vixen first. Because the whole point is, is you get extra perks. Speaking of which, I have uh, started the pattern for the add-on for, um, not Vixen, Rascal. So I've made an add-on pack for Rascal. Um, well, I haven't finished, but I've started. I've designed it and I've done the photos for the pattern. I've just got to sit down and do it. And that will not be today because I need to concentrate. Clearly I can't concentrate on anything right now. Um, I can show you at the end of this video, I will grab it so that you can all see the add-on. I've got an original and I've got an add-on here. I need to take some professional photos of it and then I'm sending it to mum. So I wonder if you can all guess what colour it's going to be. Mum, don't tell them. The other reason I chose to do this today is because I'm tired and I can basically make this in my sleep. The rascal is the one with the fringe, yes. 
so I have made it with fringing. Um, and what I did, actually, just a fun little fact, I'm going to show it to you. I painted the back of the vinyl with a spray can of paint. You might think I'm crazy, but I promise it worked. Ugh. This fabric is amazing. I love this. I also really love from this pre-order, the Tigers. I am probably going to buy some. It's very high on my priority list of things that I want. Even though I'm on a fabric ban and it's going relatively well, the tigers are like floating on their backs in water and they're adorable and it would be the cutest baby bag. And handbag. <laughs> oh, welcome back, sneezes. Oh, I haven't even finished prepping this properly. What is wrong with my brain? Oh, they are the knife blades for my stabby knife, I'm pretty sure. <coughs> oh, this is going to get old real fast. All right, so what have we got? I've got two of them. This I forgot to put um, foam on, so that's going to be fun. No, so my mum's favourite colour is not green. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of straps in this bag. So those are the ones that I need for the exterior. These are the side pieces for the D-rings. Instead of just putting it <laughs> into the seam allowance, um, I've decided to put them up the side. Uh, I can show you because I'm pretty sure I did it on this one. Right, so instead of putting the, the D-ring in here, which I know a lot of people struggle with because it's thick. What I do is I put it so it comes up on the inside piece. So there's like a piece of vinyl that goes kind of all the way up. It's really hard to show you. Um, so from the base all the way up like a normal strap connector and then it holds the D-ring. Yes, it is purple. Mother's favourite colour is purple. Everything I make her is in purple. Uh, so I use both shades of the purple vinyl that I have. <sighs> Alright, let's talk double-sided tape. For those that are not in my Facebook group, you don't know this yet, but the, te I can't say terrible because it sounds like terrible, the rippable, the rippable double-sided tape, which is not the one, oh no, it is the one I'm currently using. So it, you can just rip it off. Uh, I now stock this. Now, if you're in the US, you can get it from the Ghana Sewing Room. Uh, and if you're in Australia, I now have it. I have 50 rolls of each of the sizes. I have an eighth of an inch, which is perfect for people that seem to be getting... Um, if you're getting zips that kind of do the wobble thing and you don't know how to fix it, my, I highly recommend buying the one eighth inch zipper tape uh, because... It will stop the rippling. Just dead in its tracks. Good to go. Um, so I have them all on my website. I'm down to about 40 of each, actually, because a lot of people ordered it last night because they're in my Facebook group and they saw it. Another thing I will start doing more regularly, but not so much that it annoys you, is I'm going to start sending, like, email, newslettery updates of stuff. I also have bag foam fusible fleece and inchal bright in like restocked the inchal bright um went up by like a lot like it was over it went up by over a hundred dollars a roll uh so i've bought the half size roll which i thought was much better for everyone so i, I now sell inchal bright again but instead of the really long one and a two 112 centimeters wide. It's now about 60. I've written 60. I think it's about 61 to be honest. Oh, there you go. I know you said it isn't allergies, but are you sure? Officially, no, I'm not sure, but this never happens unless I'm tired. Ever. Like, I don't know. My body's just weird. I sneeze. When I wake up in the morning, 
I sneeze every morning to wake up and every night before I go to bed. Every single day of my life, it's just a weird thing my body does. Always has. Mum can attest to that. I always sneeze in the morning, sneeze at night time. It's super annoying, I promise. Like if I start sneezing crazy and I'm at a party, it is time to go home because my body's about to give me a stuffy nose and like tired eyes. I usually get enough sleep. I was reading a book last night um, and every time I put it down to go back to sleep, my body didn't actually want to sleep, it wanted to read the book. So I did until about quarter past one this morning and then I woke up at five. So I've had less than four hours sleep and that's what's wrong with me today. Yeah, I know it's time for sleep, but it's also time to do some sewing. I really like sewing. All right, done. Let us grab our main panels. Two of these. And before I continue sewing, let's go and answer another one of those questions. Oh, how do I keep sewing fun? I work full time, so six days a week and do markets every other week. Um, the way I keep sewing fun is if I've had enough of sewing things I don't like, if you make custom orders, I promise you will not like every custom order you get. Some people have some very unique tastes on custom things that they want, which is totally fine. Um, but you're not going to enjoy all of them. So every time I do a custom order, afterwards I make myself something, whether that's a dress or whether I've wanted to try a new pattern or something. Um, I also keep it fresh because I write patterns. It's a, it's a big effort to do so, but if I want a pattern and it's not around and I can't see it anywhere, I just write it myself. That's not right. Um, so to keep sewing fresh, I've also discovered that having a giant stash is actually counterintuitive to my happiness of sewing. Um, and hear me out on this. Um... I have a lot of fabric that I've had there for a very long time and I stare at it so often that it no longer excites me to sew with it. This is a very real problem that I'm having. Uh, so what I do instead is I'm now working through it all um, and using a lot of it for linings and doing like embroidered bags and stuff. But I'm not hoarding a bunch of fabric because the more you stare at it and you go, oh, not today, another day. I actually personally find that I get sick of looking at it and then I stop being excited to sew with it. So that's why I've been working so hard to get my stash down. It's not just about moving house. It is also about the fact that I'm a little bit sick of staring at a lot of my fabrics. And so to prevent this from happening in the future, I'm trying to sew through them all and then I will be able to like go to the shop, buy something cute, come home and sew it straight away because it won't make it to a stash. Now obviously I need to have a little bit of fabric on hand, uh, but I used to have a full eight cube shelf full of fabric and I am down, oh no it would have been more than eight, it would have been maybe 12, 12 cubes, I'm down to six and they're all becoming a bit loose now. So my mission in life is to work through my fabrics and actually not have a stash. And I know that's counterintuitive to like all the sewing groups that all go, oh, my stash is so huge. And that's great if that's your thing. But for me personally, I am so sick of staring at a whole bunch of fabrics I've got there. I went and I went through a phase where I was obsessed with license prints. So I have two full cubes full of license prints and I keep just ignoring them because I don't want to do them. So I need to pick a pattern. I'm thinking maybe a backpack pattern where I can just make up all the license prints into kids stuff and then it's gone. 
And that's obviously not all licensed prints, but like I can't see too many adults wanting like a Spider-Man bag, for example. Spider-Man is not exclusively for men and boys, that would be sexist, but I don't know a lot of girls that run around obsessed with Spider-Man. Maybe the, the ghost spider chick, because she's a chick and she wears pink and white, but you get my point. Um, so, I need to pick a bag pattern, like a backpack, so it'll use up enough, and then I'll turn the, the last little bits probably into wallets, because somebody might want a Spider-Man wallet as a less dramatic option. But that's, that's currently the plan about that. So the way I keep sewing fun is I'm not having a huge stash, so it's exciting to go and buy fabric, and you're not going to feel guilty about hoarding it and going, oh, did I really need to buy it because I've already got all this fabric at home? So that's pretty much what I'm doing. I also avoid going to Spotlight, and if I do, I mainly buy fabric from the remnant bin because you'd be surprised at how much you can get out of one of the remnants. Um, a lot of bags take more vinyl than printed fabric. A lot of them. Um, so Isolina is also made out of this. We're going to do it. I've just picked a different vinyl to put with it yet again because I'm trying to be all exciting and different. Um, but it only takes the print on that front main panel and the rest of the exterior is all vinyl. So I didn't really need a lot of that fabric to make that bag. So remnants are not always a bad thing. If you can get them around half a metre, you can get a vixen and a strumpet out of that. And so that's a whole set that you can sell. And remnants in Australia, I don't know how they are overseas, but they're way cheaper. So it's exciting. I get to buy a new fabric and I get a set. Anyway, I'm going to stop ranting about that now. While I've got this here though... I am going to grab this and find the centre, because, you know, centre of everything. Clearance table is also good, but again, I don't get carried away anymore. If I don't have a plan for a fabric, I actually tend to not buy it. So my most recent purchases, funnily enough, was this fabric. I bought it and sewed it up in the same week. I bought it with full intentions of turning it into a baby bag. It, I don't think this one was the remnant. I think I actually paid a meter. It was on sale. And I went, oh my God, cute baby bag that's fun and bright and happy because not everybody wants baby tones. And it's also gender neutral. On the inside, I actually went with yellow to make it super gender neutral, adorable, fun. And I sewed that up the same week I bought it. The same day, I bought two remnants. One is a solid green. In fact, I'll get up and show you. I'll show you my point. Oh, so it was that one. And this one. So these are the two remnants that I bought at the same time. So I went and I only bought these three pieces of fabric. Now... These match really, really well. This is a plain like linen blend, and I'm going to use this on the outside of the bag, and I'm going to embroider something that's a bit girly because of the matching floral. So I bought those as two remnant pieces, and look at the size of the remnant, right? Like it's huge. It's like 85 centimeters, I think. So I will get a bag and a wallet and probably another bag and other stuff, right? out of this one piece and this piece of fabric in my hand I think cost me three or four dollars and this was a four dollar a meter remnant and then they had half price and so there's about 80 centimeters of this so this cost me two or three dollars and I'm going to so I bought it not necessarily with a bag in mind but embroidery with a lining so it's all that's, and that's all I bought with the little Mr. Men. And I only bought it because it was in the remnant pile. And obviously I haven't done it yet. Uh, but in my defense, school holidays have definitely kept me quite busy doing other things. Which is why I haven't done it. But yeah. 
So I buy things now with more intention than I used to. I also like to support the smaller quilt shops in Townsville. So when I've got some spare money, I will go and just buy some half meter pieces of fabric that's pretty. Sometimes they do cost a bit more, but honestly, I don't really care. Which is why I'm pretty much considering buying the Inklings fabric because it's adorable and I already have a plan for it. I'm gonna make a baby bag and I'm going to make a dog walking bag and I'm going to do a wallet. So I know exactly what I'm making with my meter. Which, by the way, her meters, her meter lengths are a meter and a half wide. So you get crap tons out of a meter. I'm gonna sneeze again. <laughs> oh, stop it! As you can see, I've made this bag so many times that I can now do that without pinning. You should probably clip that if you're new to this bag. Don't just like wing it, right? I've just made a lot of these. I've made probably at least 20. It's a very popular pattern. It's cute. And all the pockets on the outside are easy to access. Okay. Oh, this is driving me insane. I really do apologise if my sneezing is driving you insane as well. I promise I'm not meaning to. Alright, so that answers the how do I keep sewing fun question in very elaborate detail. So I hope that helps. Switch up your patterns, try something new. If you're doing someone's custom order and you don't want to do it, or it's a pattern you don't particularly like and you're dragging your feet, do it. Do it with a reward of either fabric shopping or sewing something for yourself at the end that will help. If you're doing markets, I do understand that people want what they want, but switch it up. I switch stuff up all the time. I just make stuff up as I go. Sometimes people will be like, I'd like to order another bag like the one I ordered last time. I need them to send me a photo because I have no idea what I'm doing sometimes. No idea. Like, Sometimes I'll just do stuff because I can't. Change pockets and add accents and, you know, change strap connectors and all kinds of crazy stuff because it keeps it interesting and then I'm not just sewing the same bag over and over and over. I can show you another example. I know this is not what the video was going to be, but clearly I'm sidetracked. All right, this is Lola by Swoon. Women love this bag, by the way. This is the same pattern and look how different it looks, right? So this one, I use these very cute strap connectors and I've done embroidery and I've made myself up this cute little accent on the side, done it in all vinyl. Then in this one, I've done strap connectors and I've put um, a vinyl accent on the strap connectors. It's all fabric. They look very different even though they're the same bag. Keeps it interesting. I do love my nameplates. Um, <laughs> I have some coming, so I'll be able to do custom orders for the big ones, but the little ones I offer are perfect to sew into wallets at the moment. So anyway, that's how I keep my sewing interesting. Um, I do do a lot of sewing that you guys don't see. I can't record everything. It takes a long time. And as you can see, I get sidetracked and talk to you, which means I get less sewing done. Some days I just need to like smash it out. Don't be a chicken about embroidery. It's actually not that bad. Don't have your needle going faster than 600 RPMs if you have the option to change the speed. Most of them only go up to 600, so it's not an issue. But if you've got like a fancy one with speed control, have it on like the middle setting. You'll be fine. I promise it's not that scary. Oh, I don't practice. I just go for gold. Some prints won't work if they're really thick, layered, like Urban Threads is my go-to for really cute designs because I find 99% of them will go on vinyl very, very well. There are, of course, some that won't, but like everything, there's an exception to the rule. But generally speaking, their designs are thick, 
but not so thick that you can't put them on vinyl. There is a very cute kind of rose design where it's got lots and lots of stitches. I have tried that several times on vinyl. That one's not a thing. Um, but a lot of the other ones are. So there you go. Um, the other person I like to get designs off is... String Theory Fabric Art. She does a lot of, like, license-inspired stuff. So she's got, like, all the Lord of the Rings ones and stuff like that. She also has a lot of good ones. Is that working? Yeah. So, and I think they've got a sale at the moment, too, actually. Uh, there's another one called Off With Their Threads instead of Off With Their Heads, and I really like that. They have um, some cute designs too. I suppose it depends on what you want to put on a bag. Like, what's your interest in that? So the, the moon sunflower thing that you saw on the other bag, that's an ermine threads design. The idea is it's the moon in the middle with sunflowers around the edge. Um, my, my handbag that I did with all the embroidery and stuff, that's all from String Theory Fabric Art. Embroidery Lighty has really cute kind of cutesier ones it just depends what you're into each to their own and all that jazz all right what are some other questions do i sell the binding i use on seams and can i show a close-up of the packaging uh no i don't sell it i get it from the same place i get my thread which is Vardman threads um, and it literally just comes rolled up with a rubber with a rubber band so it comes like this it doesn't come in cute packaging or anything which is fine by me because I would just throw it out anyway it all just lives in a drawer here um, so it is it's got like cool little lines in it and it's got a little bit of see how it's got a little bit of flex that helps you to go around curves easier I always like to be encouraging. Everybody should try at least one new thing every six months. Alright. The thread size I use is M40, which in America is known as Tex 70. So I hope that helps. That's another question there. Um, and I use a size 18 needle because it's the largest this machine can cope with. Um, no, twill, oh, it might be like, it is like twill tape, yes. It is very much like twill tape. They call it binding, um, polyester binding, polypropylene binding, one of those two. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but twill tape is very much similar, yes. Um... All right, business advice. Decide from day one, do you want to deal with custom orders? This is the best business advice I can give you. You either want to do them because they're guaranteed money, or you don't because you just want to sew what you want to sew. Both answers are totally okay. It doesn't matter if you do or you don't. But make that decision from day one. Now, if you do want to offer custom orders... You need to get full payment up front from the get-go and let them all know that it will take a minimum of, I always say, two weeks, uh, unless you're ordering their fabric from overseas, and then they also need to understand that that's a thing, and it will take longer. So you need to give them an overestimated time frame in case something comes up in life. Um, and if you only do custom orders... You want to have a non-refundable deposit for like the fabric that you buy because they might want something really, really weird that you're never going to be able to sell otherwise. And so if they cancel their order and you've already bought the fabric, there needs to be like a penalty for that because now you're stuck with that piece of fabric. So that's, you need to have that in your terms and conditions if you're going to offer custom orders. Take full payment up front because 
I don't, I don't make bags until you've paid for it on the website anymore because I got sick of chasing people for their money for the bag that they so desperately wanted. I don't want to have to chase you for your money. You order it, you pay for it. So now I make them pay for it up front in full. My website has afterpay. It shouldn't be an issue. Well, they can wait until they can afford it, and that's fine too. But I will not buy fabric or hardware or anything until they have paid for their bag because... It's really frustrating having to chase people for your money. I don't want to have to chase invoices. Um, I hate the paperwork part of my day. So, no. Um, other things I've learned, if you're doing markets, always have to, like different price points. Don't just everything be 100 bucks or 50 bucks, right? Like You need to have some other things. And don't get carried away with your other things. They are just for people that want to support you, that can't afford the cool stuff. Okay, I am missing heaps of pieces of this pattern. I haven't cut a Tory pocket, because let's be honest, we always do a Tory pocket. I haven't put foam on the sides. I actually can't go too much further without getting off my butt and doing stuff. Which is fine, I'll just tilt the camera up, you can watch me from a distance. I can't do that yet, because I can't do the side bits yet. Oh, I can do the inside side bits. This is what happens when you cut on school holidays. You get distracted, and then you don't realise you miss bits. Such is life, I guess. Anyway, uh, what other business advice? Stick to your guns. If you don't want to do custom orders, don't do them. Don't let people strong arm you into dropping your price. You are worth every cent that you ask for. I'm just tired. It's I am congested, but it's not allergies. It's I haven't had enough sleep, and this is what my body does in protest to not having enough sleep. It's not the first time it's happened. Literally every time I don't get enough sleep, this is what my body does to me, and I usually take the day off and hide in bed and watch TV. But I'm not doing that because... A, this pre-order ends on Friday, and I've still got this bag, Isolina, and a wallet ready to go. Although we might not finish this bag, let's be honest. I've got to get up and cut a bunch of stuff. But we'll get at least halfway while I'm chatting and going through all the questions that you guys have. Um, I made Leilani, and I had these cool D-ring attachments that hold on with two screws. I don't remember what they're called, but if you guys want me to, I will hunt it down and offer them on the website because strap connectors are cool and they're so much quicker than actually doing strap connectors. I know, and I've just taken the better part of two weeks off because of school holidays. I'm not just bailing out now. I'm not actually sick. I am just tired. Like, Look at my eyeballs. They're not as white as they normally are. And my eyes are slightly sore. It's also why I put makeup on to hide the fact that I'm tired. But I'm not actually having like a cold or something. I will get sleep and I will feel better. I promise. It's just a sleep thing. Although I did just drink most of that giant can of Red Bull. So I don't suspect that sleep is coming anytime soon. I'm already down to here. Alright, what other question? Oh, that's the end of the questions. There you go. That's all your questions answered. I am now taking new questions. Oh, it's so cute. My horse. Okay, my horse is still limping. Uh, so he had a giant abscess in his foot. It got dug out. Um, and then for me, I thought to prevent infection, I'll put his boots on. So I put disinfectant. And I put like a, a, it's called, what was it called? Animal something. I don't know. Anyway, it's like a drawing out bandage, but it's a dry one, like a poultice. A dry poultice, that's what it's called. So I put it on his foot, and I put his boots on, and I left him in the paddock. And while that fixed that section, up here on his heels, he then got all sores from the sweating in the boots. So then I had to take his boots off and put him in the medical paddock for like a week. And then the other day he decided to escape. So I've now put him back in his big paddock because they're mostly better. And I have to go out this afternoon and double check. Uh, but I've been pouring betadine on it. So I've nearly gone through like a whole bottle of betadine that's about this size. Um, and as for the house, I think we have one. 
I will officially let you know because last time I did this, I got really excited we were gonna get a house and then we had the pest inspection and then we didn't get the house. So I'm up to the pest inspection of the house. It is amazing. It is not online. It was um, before market. So we swooped in and bought it before it went to market. So you can't go sneakily look at it. Uh, but after I have a house, I can get insurance and then I can allow pickups. So I will have a pickup option on my website um, I haven't worked out fully how that works, but basically there will be times and I will just leave it on my front step in like a cute little box and you'll be able to get and pick up in Townsville your packages. That will be an option. I can't do it here. I'm not allowed to because it's a, an army house that I'm just not allowed to. All right. Oh, I have purple spray. I have thrush buster that's also purple. I've put a lot of stuff on his feet. Uh, I put bleach in water and put his foot in it for five, or not five minutes, probably about two. Then he got bored and started moving around because he was eating. Uh, so I have bleach watered his feet. I have bedded in his feet. I did the wrapping thing, but because of the boots, uh, that was counterproductive, and that's now what the problem is. So the abscess on the bottom is gone, and his feet aren't so bad there. It's now, like, up here. <laughs> so, but he's getting better. So I'll be able to ride him again soon, and that's going to be amazing because I just want to go and jump things. Jumping things is fun. Alright. What other questions do we have? We're just going to hop up a bit. I'm going to go and find some waterproof canvas. So as a minimum, I could do a Tory pop it. <sighs> Always need a Tory. Whoops. Didn't throw that out because that'll be a bit for something else. For anyone that does not yet have a Tory Pocket template, what are you doing with your life? Get onto it. Best thing ever. Love this pattern. Oh look, and it perfectly fits into my scrap. But yeah, so the house, the house is a 99% go ahead. Um, which will be amazing. Absolutely amazing. I will offer pickups. Um, I have a sewing room. It's probably about the same size as this one. But, because we own it, I can attach things to walls. And I'm very excited about that. Tory template, the bomb. So it comes with a half inch hole. Uh, perfect for size 5 zipper tape. You can also use it with a size 3. You just get to see a little bit more of the zipper tape. Um, it is 8 by 12 inches. I'll tell you the size. I have no dramas about that. I use this pocket in all of my patterns and then I trade it out for other people's patterns that I do videos for because personally for me, I don't like doing the facing and then the top and the bottom and the join it. I like the one piece. It's just, I don't know. It's what I like. Everyone likes different stuff. Some people prefer the facing thing because then your lining uh, piece will have all the right sides up. And that's fine too. Uh, I like what I like. You are welcome to like what you like. I love templates in general. I have been making myself some lately um, out of other people's patterns because legally I can't get them made unless I buy them from America and pay crazy amounts of postage. So I've been making them out of like wood, which has been super handy. So like the NCW, the rectangles you need, that's on my list of things to do today. I've also done two people's orders for your tags. It is a nighttime thing for me. So I do it at night time while I'm watching television. I love zipper overlays. I also, I don't know if you guys have seen and if you've been here lately, but I have done new strap, uh, strap connector ends. And I don't know if you've got the, the zipper templates, but you will notice a correlation in that they look the same. So there's that one. And then there's that one, and then there's that one. So you can have your overlay the same shape as your strap connectors. And these are nice big chunky ones. 
Uh, so you can buy them in sevens. So there's, there's 14 of them. So you can buy 1 to 7 or 8 to 14 or all of them, uh, depending on your budget and stuff. So that's that one there. Uh, there's your round one and your curved one. So that's that one. And that's that one. See what's going on there? Love it. Uh, so this is the second set. So this is the high numbers. In my hand I have 12, 13, 14, 8, 9, 10, 11. Alright, so they match these ones. Just if that's something you're into, like you want to have it all matchy-matchy. Again, one day soon I'm going to do a video about it, but, you know. I've been busy and sneezy. Right, how much will the tags cost when I send you mine? Uh, I don't know, I'll work that out, not now. Don't ask me to do maths right now. My brain's not on full cylinders. Um, we are making a swoon baby bag, but we're not going to get the whole way because there's a whole bunch of things I forgot to cut out, so now I'm just talking. It's pretty much what happened there. But that's alright, because I will get up in a minute and I will show you what the add-ons are going to look like for the rascal. And for those that don't know what Rascal is, it is my fringed, like, western-y style bag. Because I was having a thing about fringing. What is going on with this fold? The fold's in the wrong spot. Feels like Wednesday. It is Wednesday here! Alright, so we line up the two notches. I always do about an inch, but I eyeball it. I'm gonna sneeze <laughs> again. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so we won't be doing other videos today, but let me just show you the other one I am excited about. I cut out a wallet out of some vinyl, but this snake print is in the, what's it called? Pre-order. <laughs> so you can get this in a fabric. It's got like cute pink snakes. As much as I am terrified of wild snakes, right? In Australia, we have a lot of deadly snakes that are all trying to kill me. I'm genuinely, I just believe they're all trying to kill me. However, if you give me your pet snake, we will be best friends. I love pet snakes. They won't bite me. I've been like warned. And I don't pull them out of the cage because sometimes they strike to get out of the cage. My mate had like a big two meter python or whatever. We used to just hang out, She'd crawl over me. It was fine. No drama with pet snakes. It's wild snakes that are all trying to kill me. Uh, but this one's really cute because it's pink. Love it. Oh, got it sideways. There you go. So this is going to be what's the pattern called? Is my brain again not firing on all cylinders? It doesn't say. I've got the name of the pattern somewhere. But it's very, very cute. I would like to get that video done this week. As well as the Isolina. We will see how I go. Uh, once I do my market setup, I will do a mock setup in my backyard to show you all what it's going to look like. That feels crooked. I think that's crooked. Uh, I don't know when the market is. I haven't actually booked myself in a market because I'm waiting on some stuff to show up. Oh no, it's not crooked. I'm just tripping. Just that I'd check. Um, so I'm going to do the Strand Night Markets, which are on a Friday night. And I think it's the first Friday of every month. But I've ordered some very cool um, wallet stands. And then I've got to go and buy like tables and tablecloths and stuff because I have nothing for markets. I kind of got rid of it all when we moved up here because I was like, I'm not doing markets and now I'm totally going to go do markets. I understand life gets in the way and you miss the start. It's totally fine. I have got a video of this bag that's not live so that you can watch it all in order start to finish. Um... But yeah. I don't mind.
find pet snakes because people's pet snakes are never deadly, right? And that's a very key point. People get pythons. Pythons don't kill people. They like strangle like rats and stuff, which to me is totally fine. It's brown snakes and taipans and red belly black snakes in Australia that are all like venomous, poisonous, venomous. They're all out to kill me, right? And the other thing is, right, in Australia, there's a lot of... So brown snakes in Australia are not necessarily brown. I'd just like to also point this out. Like, in America, your rattlesnake looks like a rattlesnake. It's got big brown... Like, it's got the rattle thing on the end of the tail. You can look at it and be like, that's a rattlesnake. In Australia, venomous... Yeah, venomous and non-venomous snakes from the top laying in the grass look the same. Brown snakes in Australia can be light brown, dark brown, or black. Red belly black snakes from the top are black. But whip snakes in Australia are also black, and they're not venomous. They won't hurt you. But I can't tell in the grass five metres away what kind of snake it is. So I just assume they're all trying to kill me. I know I'm crazy. Just leave me be. I did. I also remember when my dog killed a whip snake. My other, um, the same dog also killed a brown snake. Uh, the whip snake bit him on the face and he had to go on special med so that all his skin wouldn't, what's the word, necro something, where the skin dies. Where I used to live in Pakapanyal, apparently it's the largest area of taipan snakes in Victoria, so that was fun. And admittedly, I only ever saw one snake, two snakes while horse riding so far. One, my horse, when I first got in, uh, lost control and went galloping off into the fucking distance with me on him. He went into racehorse mode, because he's the next racehorse. Uh, and we actually galloped over the top of the snake, and I was really concerned that he was going to shy at it and throw me off. But we were fine. Um, and the other time I saw one was I was riding. They were going to do a burn off in Victoria in Pakapanyal, um, and so I was walking. I was on the horse with Jesse next to people, and there was like a giant, and I'm talking giant, over two meter snake that like ran off into one of the burn piles. So we promptly turned around and left before A, my horse noticed, B, Jesse noticed, and I just didn't want to go confront a big ass snake. I don't know what kind it was, I can tell you it was black. It's all I got. Which in Australia could mean anything. You can tell by their tummies, but I'm not getting close enough to check. Right, sorry, yes, I'm ranting about snakes. We are making the swoon baby bag and I am putting in a Tory pocket because that's just what I do. But all of the bags I've made with this particular vinyl, I've actually cut them all out with different coloured vinyl. Uh, the bunny fabric. All the vinyl I've cut out on all the bags is all different. So the first one I did that bold bubblegum pink and canary yellow. This one is pixie dust and the other one is a shiny pink from Inklings and the Kraken that you haven't seen yet because I haven't made it yet. I did make this dress, pretty sure I did a video on it. This is like a retro pattern I got from 50 cents from a an op shop, which is a thrift store in America. We call them op shops because they're it's short for opportunity shop. And in Australia, everything gets shortened. It's just how we roll. Anyway, um, it's a fabulous pattern. I have this in navy blue as well. Uh, there is no need for a bra because I double lined it. And it's got elastic here. So there's no zips. There's no buttons. There's no anything. This is a waterproof canvas in the thick style that I offer. And I can't go any further because I forgot to put foam on here. So I need to both cut it out and then iron it on. 
And I don't want to stitch these on until the foam's there because it'll be harder to iron because it'll be crooked. The Otters, have you seen the Tigers? The Tiger is amazing. Did I make the dress in a live? I don't remember. I do know I made it in a video. I don't remember if I was live or not. I might have been. I did assume car to not car. Right. Since I can't sew anymore, let's have a look at this thing. All right. Uh, yeah, so the waistband is just lots of lines going round and round and round with shearing elastic in the bobbin. It is awesome. All right, so for those that don't know, this is the original Rascal. I've just put normal fringing instead of vinyl fringing. But you get like this triangle bit, and then on the back there is a zipper overlay with a zipper, and then it's got a magnet opening, and there's a zipper inside. Oh, look, there's that fabric I got for clearance. Ha ha! So I'll get a few bags out of that. So anyway, this is the original. And it's got this cool little bit here. This is really good. If you're going to do it Western style, you can put a big concho here. Or you can cut out a shape and have fabric underneath. You can do a lot with this. I did that shape deliberately and I haven't done all the cool little things we can do with it yet because I haven't had time. So anyway, this is the original. This is my add-on. Now, it might look the same. However, this one has a gusset so it's nice and thick and gussety it also has a recessed zipper we've got the strap connectors up the top instead of these strap connectors and on the back I've done a full slip pocket instead of the zipper pocket so I mean you could do both if you want to you could put this and that you just make this a little bit shorter uh, so this is the difference so then I've got like the zipper. The inside's the same. I didn't change the inside because there's limits. Oh, well, I kind of did. Kind of did because it's got the zipper panel. So this is the original. And so this one's like a chunkier version if you want a bigger bag. So this will be an add-on that comes with all the pattern pieces that you need. Um, and so we've also done the vinyl accent here. And these are just like stitched on top. So we don't have to join stuff, so you don't have to do them if you don't want to. But yeah, so this is the original, and this is my new add-on version. So I've taken all the photos while making this. I now just have to sit and type up the pattern and put all the pictures in the right spot. I have technically started. I've put the list of extra things you need. So instead of strap connectors, I used D-rings. However, if you wanted to, you could just attach the strap connector to here. That's all much of a muchness. It wouldn't matter. But this one you're going to put more in and therefore more weight. And so I am concerned. Oh, I'm not really concerned, concerned. But just, you know, you put more in one than the other. Yes, it would be perfect for monograms. I know in America everybody monograms everything. So you could definitely put monograms on there. Um, if you cut out an oval, you could have like a sneaky piece of the fabric from the lining poking out. You can put, I've put several, I've sewn shells on one. Pretty sure you saw that. Um, I've put conchos on here and rivets. You can do a lot with it. I only have one on one side, but if you wanted to shorten the strap, you could definitely put one on the other side and have them matching. But I kind of like that it's not. Also, on this particular bag, I now have rectangle 20 mil rings as opposed to the bigger square ones. Uh, they're on my website. I don't remember if I announced that to people or not, uh, but instead of having the big chunky square I've now got these cute little like rectangular 20 mils just for something different um, See again this one's got the rectangle ones and not the square ones It just means there's less gap between here, which I don't know works for me. I've done half and half strap So that will be the new add-on the add-on will be five Australian dollars um, and it won't be the full pattern start to finish. It'll just be how to do the add-on bits and then you will refer back to the other pattern. Um, but it's all pretty self-explanatory. Slip pocket is a slip pocket. Gusset, it's more about the measurements you need and then how I've done my one of these. So I make the zipper tabs and then we tuck them under 
our little accent piece at the top and then just top stitch it down. It's very cool. And have strap connectors on the side. But yeah, so it's got lots of beautiful fringing and the back of this is painted with like a spray can. So from a distance you don't notice. I'm telling you this because it's an important piece of information that I think everyone should know. So what you want to do is you want to cut out your two pieces, then you want to spray them outside, obviously. Don't do it inside. You'll get A, paint everywhere, and B, fume inhalation. So then once it is dry, you come inside and then you cut it up, and that will prevent you from getting it on the front part of your vinyl. If you cut it first and then spray it, you're going to have a bad time. Spray paint. It's cheaper than HTV. The downside is it's way messier, but quicker. Uh, and if you are creative and can draw, I've had a thought, I can't do it because I can't draw. But if I could draw, what I would do is I would sit it at the curve. I'd paint the whole base of the back of it, right? And then I'd kind of sit it against the curve so it was going to sit. And then I would paint a picture, like an actual picture. Then I'd chop it up so that the picture would sit when this sits together. Except I can't draw, so I haven't done it. But I would really wish that I could draw because it would be amazing. So you could draw, like, you know, anything. So if you've done a Pokemon bag, you could draw Pikachu in the fringing. And so then it moves around, and then when it settles to togetherness, there's Pikachu. It would be epic, but I can't draw, so it's out of my realm of possibility. But it might be in yours, because if you can draw or paint, or you have, like, that hobby and you're good at it, you can do that. I could also attempt to, like, transfer it over. It has been on my mind, because I do think it would be amazing. We'll see. Not today. Um, but yeah, so we're not going to get any further with that bag, because I don't have all the pieces. But I have done it earlier, and I did answer, this was more to answer all those questions, because I said I'd answer any questions people had. Um, and now you get the, like it's just thicker and chunkier. And you can fit a lot more in with a gusset, as opposed to this one's for like the minimalist, and this one's for one that wants it for an everyday chunky bag to throw everything in. Because that's, that's it for that. Whereas that one's got a lot more chunk. So there you go. I'm going to go because I can feel another sneeze coming. And my nose is getting runnier and runnier by the second. It's driving me up the wall. Um, so sorry I didn't finish, but this is a lot. And I didn't cut all the pieces, which is super annoying. I need more foam bits. Oh, that's the other thing. My, did I tell you what I might have told you? Uh, foam, bag foam, fusible fleece, an inch of bright. I did tell you because I remember telling you about the half size. So I have restocked my website of everything. So the double-sided tape from the Ghana sewing room, I now stock. Um, it is exactly the same. I buy it from her. So I've got that in three sizes on the website already. You will find it in either the hardware or supplies section. Uh, and I have restocked my interfacing. So... I'm only missing one, which I did order, they just didn't send me, which is kind of annoying. Nothing I can do about that. I did order um, woven fusible medium, but I don't think they sent it because I don't see it on my rack. So unfortunately I can't do anything about it if I order it and they don't send it. It is what it is. Why can't I use a colouring book or Google? For your shape then cut it out freeze the paper i definitely could probably do that the more i think about it the more i could probably make it happen uh which means oh i'm gonna need a fringe bag because we, we all know i'm gonna do it for myself leave that with me i've got to pick a theme for the bag i just made myself the lord of the rings one so i don't know what i want my next themed bag to be Part of me really wants a black rat bag with studs all over it. I've been thinking about it for a while. Um, but I think that might be a smaller bag. Maybe I could add fringing to a floozy because that would be cute. 
There's an idea. Studded floozy with fringing. Ooh, I don't hate that plan at all. Um, anyway, so because I am like this and I probably won't get any more sewing done today without a nap, and I won't nap because I had too much Red Bull, um, I might go and do organize the next lot of people's tags. I'm also going to go and do the postage today. So I've got a whole bunch of orders that came in last night because you all wanted the double-sided tape, which is wonderful. Um, so I will try and get all of those out today. I can't promise anything because, look, I've gone bloodshot again. Oh, so annoying. Uh, but I will try and get as many of the orders today out. I will start at the bottom of the list and work my way up. So the oldest orders will go out first, down to the newer ones. I can't promise I'll get everyone's, but I will try my hardest. Um, and if I get a nap, then tonight I'll do more tags. Because I don't want to wreck them. I did one crooked yesterday, so that's like a throwaway. But I have ordered more of the little ones. The bigger ones say that they're not in country yet. So annoying. Um, but they're coming in both square and rectangle, and they will be a thing and I will settle that up. I'm also going to offer like dog tags uh, and I'm gonna put one on a bag to show you how we're gonna use them because it's relevant. Um, I, have, I have a lot of things to do and I don't think I'm doing any of it today. Oh, okay, I'm going because I keep sniffing and it's annoying me, so I assume it's annoying you. I apologize, uh, but I hope I've answered all your questions and you just kind of watch me make half a bag while we did that. It is a super cute baby bag though, and I can show you a finished one. This is a finished one. Um, super cute. You could also offer baby bags with a matching pouch. I have something baby related I want to design, but not this month because I've got a whole bunch of other things on the go. Oh, and for those that were watching my list of things to get done, I got well over half the stuff done during the school holidays. Um, but I also overreached. I know I did. We didn't quite get there for all of it. But most of it, like, three of the things was write three patterns. And I didn't get to write any because I need to concentrate on those kinds of things. Um... I will put a photo in my Facebook group once it is completed, because uh, it is adorable. Um, I don't have allergies or a cold. I am overtired, and this is what my body does to try and convince me to go to bed. Does it every time. Last night, as I got more and more tired, my nose got more and more stuffy. And then I went to sleep, and I woke up, and my stuffy nose was gone. But apparently it's decided that I should have gone back to bed, and so it started its cycle all over again. <laughs> so very rude. Uh, but I do apologize for the sniffing because it's annoying me, so I imagine it's driving you nuts. Um, but thank you all for joining me, and I will see you guys next time on the next live. Alright. Bye everyone!